Keaton Energy has reported a 192% rise in first half headline earnings per share and a 70% increase in group revenue. Joining us now to unpack the numbers is Company Chief Executive Mandy Glad. Mandy, I'm sure when you uh, take a look at your results, you're pretty impressed with uh, what you've managed to achieve, especially with your operations in, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, Van Gatfontein. <laughs> Yes, Van very that's a <laughs> that's a it, name. That's it. <laughs> um, very happy, yes. What are you uh, doing right there in particular with regard to those operations? Um, a, a lot, yeah, I think they, they've been, it's a combination of things. We replaced our mining contract a little over a year ago, paid a lot of attention to the plant, opened a new pit. So I think we've just created flexibility and it's all come together. And, and the mine's performing really well at the moment. You haven't been plagued by uh, the concerns in like the rest of the mining industry with regard to labour unrest? Uh. Not at Van Gatfontein, um, somewhat at Volkrans, uh, but at Van Gatfontein thankfully not. Mm. This is one of those stocks that we keep hearing whispers about. It's not a, not a very particularly big company, 460 million rand market cap, but uh, you seem to have got the rumour mill, or at least the, the traders pretty excited about you. Are you doing a lot of work telling them your story? Uh, trying to, yes. Uh, uh, I, I spend as much time as I can out there, um, largely as a result of the fact that I don't think our share price is, is, is reflective of our value. Um, and therefore, obviously, I, I try to interact as much as I can with the market. Um, so, yes. Uh, how, how, how so? How so not reflective of your value? Well, I mean, if you just look at our net asset value, it's, it's significantly higher than our market cap. Um, and yes, so in, in, in my opinion, I need to do that work and I'd love to start seeing it come through in the share price. You've come back a long way, 4 Rand 53 years ago, mm -hmm. 2 Rand 50 today, so quite a lot of upside potentially with this kind of number. Absolutely. And I think, I think the market's been looking at us to, to deliver some positive results, which I believe for this period we have. I believe it's sustainable. We'll be back in, in, in March, I hope, with equally as good a story. And, and perhaps at some point the, the share will start to reflect that. Your strategy, though, to get to a 5 million tonne a year produ producer, that's kind of the, uh, the, the magic number. Why? Uh, that's when, when it all began in 2008. We said our, our short-term goal was 2.4 million tonnes and, and 5 million tonnes was the, the medium-term goal. We obviously achieved the 2.4 and therefore in terms of delivering on what we said initially, um, 5 million tonnes is, is, is the next number. And we have a plan and, and we should get there by uh, 2017. How are you hoping to make that happen? Well, we have an internal pipeline of projects, one being Coda Lager, which we will develop in, in, the, in the course of next year. Um, thereafter, we are working on an acquisition that hopefully will succeed and, and we will successfully close, in which case Moabsfelden will come on stream in January 2015. And thereafter, an existing project, uh, Brockfontein, which will see us at 5.36 million tonnes. And this company that you talk about in, in the set of results, mm. Exceed Resources, yes. is that also another step in the direction? Yes, the Moabsfelden project I speak of is, is the asset that we would acquire through the acquisition of Exceed. You know, it's interesting, Mandy, uh, David Salter, your chairman in this yes. company, I remember him well from the days with Lucas Perulis and mm. Platinum, Airlines Platinum, they did a fantastic job there in selling, I don't know how well they did in producing, yes. but uh, how, how did he move from Platinum to coal? What's the story there? Um, I, don't, I don't think there was ever a conscious move um, from Platinum to coal, it was as a result of uh, the back end of, of, of Eland, and obviously David was Lucas's right hand man for a number of years, and in fact Lucas's son, Fivos, and myself founded Keaton. So it was a sort of natural progression. I think Lucas probably said, David, go and look after the kids. And, and, and that's how I landed up there. But I, I, I'm happy to say he's a proper coal man now. And the Perulis is uh, considerable involvement? Um, uh, operationally, no, but from a shareholding perspective, yes. How uh, big? But 43, 44%. So that's why we're hearing all, this, all the talk about Keaton, because uh, Lucas is certainly a fairly good promoter. Uh, very much so. He's, I, I think he's been quite quiet actually in the last few years, um, but absolutely a good promoter. And from a, from a broader perspective, and clearly you're in the coal industry so you, you love what you're doing, but do, don't you get concerned sometimes when you hear about the replacements that we're seeing for coal, like Karoo Gas on the one hand here in South Africa which potentially could be a, a very big competitor for coal, and of course renewable resources? Alec, pe perhaps naively, um, I, I don't because I, I, I think it's, it's some way off. 
you know, the, the, the outside of, of, of proving it to, to be viable, the, the, the capital requirements and, and to replace the, 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 the power gener uh, coal generated um, power, I don't see happening in the foreseeable future. I think it'll chip away slowly, a couple of percent at a time, um, but certainly I believe we're 20, 30 years away from that. Well, you've so. also had uh, considerable growth in sales to ESCOM, so naturally once the other power plants come on board, uh, Midube as well as Kusile, are you positioned uh, to benefit from that? Uh, Kusile potentially, um, uh, Midupi no, we, we, we don't have a position in, in, in the water. How come? I, I think a, a, a decision, you know, a, a initially from my perspective it was as a result of I didn't see how the, the infrastructure was going to support um, much happening there. And, and I think in, in, in order to have, have made a success in the Waterberg, you needed a couple of billion tons. And at the time, we took a view and decided we would, we would position ourselves in the known coal fields and, and, and around all the power stations. And it's, it's worked for us. And, and obviously, via the acquisition of Exceed, we will grow our footprint in Dalmas. Um, so I think um, for us, it's it, just at the time, I didn't think it was the right decision. Perhaps and the relationships with the DMR? H how's that all panning out now? Um, uh, uh, you, we know the DMR being our regulator is, is not easy. Uh, having said that, we formed a good relationship. It takes a lot of work. Uh, so yes, we, we, we manage with what we've got, but uh, certainly no, no major concerns or complaints.